Greetings, Elderly Vegan here, and welcome to my video on how excess protein, particularly animal protein, has the potential to indirectly lead to debilitating chronic disease. And the information I will be presenting reflects current research. As such, I will be discussing what three well-known experts in the field of nutrition and longevity have to say regarding this issue. And I should mention up front, the three of them are not in lockstep agreement with one another. Perhaps the most influential expert in this field is Harvard University's longevity researcher, Dr. David Sinclair, where he discusses his findings in his book, Lifespan, Why We Age and Why We Don't Have To. And without a doubt, Dr. Sinclair's research has brought new insight into this topic just within the last few years. Yet I will also be mentioning Dr. Michael Greger's take on this subject from his new book, How Not to Age. Dr. Greger, as you may know, is a leading proponent of a vegan lifestyle and the author of multiple books. Finally, I will also be presenting information from Dr. Mark Hyman who's the Director of Functional Medicine at the Cleveland Clinic. And I will be referring to his new book entitled Young Forever. Okay then, let's begin with what the, all the experts agree on. Apparently, there's a master regulator of growth referred to as mTOR. And for those overachievers out there, mTOR stands for mammalian target of rapamycin, but it also is referred to as mechanistic target of rapamycin. And as you can see, no one would want to use these terms more than once. From here on out, it shall be mTOR. Anyway, here's how it works. mTOR drives growth. As such, we most definitely want to ramp up mTOR from birth through early adulthood. But once we reach adulthood, ramping up this process may well come at a price. And what the research is showing is that activating mTOR not only has the ability to build new muscle, but it may also set the stage for many forms of debilitating chronic disease, including obesity, type 2 diabetes, and cancer. So what's occurring here? Why would these chronic diseases be associated with mTOR, which is a growth regulator? To answer this question, one needs to know what happens when mTOR is not activated. And this occurs with reduced nutrient intake. When mTOR is not activated, this is when the body goes into a process of self-maintenance. It's a time of renewal. It's a time of cleaning house. And the term for this house cleaning process is referred to as autophagy. And in this case, the debris which is removed is to a large extent from dead and dying cells or cellular debris in general, which otherwise would be spewing out pro-inflammatory compounds all over the place, therein setting the stage for all those various forms of deadly chronic disease. Therefore, we need to find a way to clean house. And what the current research is showing is that the most potent driver of mTOR boils down to basically just four amino acids which are found primarily in animal protein. They include methionine plus the three branched chain amino acids. Yet caloric restriction, or fasting, has the opposite effect. They shut down mTOR, and this allows time for this recycling process to occur. For completeness, I should probably mention that branched chain amino acids are not missing in plant protein. Rather, it's just that plant protein has fewer of them. And in a podcast, I heard Dr. Greger state that although it's harder to stimulate mTOR with plant protein, it's not impossible. 
However, I noticed he did not specify if branched-chain amino acids in supplement form would be required to stimulate mTOR if one was a vegan, and I think this is an important point. But as mentioned in the title of this video, herein is where the double-edged sword comes into play. If one goes into maintaining a low level of protein intake, so as not to activate this growth regulator, how then does one maintain muscle mass later in life? And this is because extra protein is required to keep those muscles firm and youthful. Furthermore, as we age, our ability to absorb protein from our food declines. As you might suspect, we have entered the realm of a classic catch-22 situation. I say this because reduced protein intake as we age sets the stage for a loss of muscle mass, which is referred to as sarcopenia. And sarcopenia too is deadly. It ultimately can lead to falls and fractures. And according to Dr. Hyman, sarcopenia is one of the key accelerators of rapid aging and disease. So what's a person to do? If you ramp up mTOR later in life, you run the risk of developing deadly chronic disease, but if you shut it down, you run the risk of developing sarcopenia and frailty. How do you solve this dilemma? Yet Dr. Hyman has a different interpretation, and I find it encouraging. And if he's correct, it'll go a long way towards solving this catch-22 situation. He agrees that a surplus of those amino acids can drive mTOR, but he goes on to say that if you want to avoid all of the negative outcomes of driving mTOR, stay away from sugar and refined carbohydrates. And this sounds like excellent advice to me. With all due respect to Dr. Hyman, I really take exception to just one sentence from his book. That sentence is as follows, and I quote, Unless we have adequate, high-quality protein with the right amino acids found primarily in animal protein, as we age, we lose muscle and replace our youthful, strong, low-fat filet mignon muscle with weak, fat-infused Wagyu ribeye. End quote. Don't tell me I have weak, fat-infused Wagyu ribeye muscles from not eating animal protein. I'll have you know, as of this video, I'm just 138 days away from my 75th birthday, and I am still quite capable of meeting the push-up and the pull-up requirement for the Navy SEALs, as specified by their personal fitness test. And I have done so by consuming only plant-based protein sources, such as whole grains, legumes, nuts and seeds, tofu, soy milk, and a single serving of plant-based protein drink from peas, chia seeds, and cranberry seeds. Furthermore, I've never taken branched-chain amino acids in supplement form, which mimic high-quality animal protein, although vegan-friendly options are available. But I also need to mention, it takes more than just quality protein if you want to pass the push-up requirement for the Navy SEALs. It takes dedicated, no-nonsense resistance training workouts, plus engaging in a squeaky clean nutritional program. And when I have push-up days, my bare minimum is 325 push-ups in sets averaging almost 47 push-ups per set. Okay, I'm done. But I also have a problem with the advice given by both Dr. Sinclair and Dr. Greger. Unless I really missed a key point in both of their books, it sounds to me that if one wants to lead a long, healthy life, their recommendation seems to be Knock off ramping up mTOR on a routine basis, especially as we get older. That, to me, implies lay low and reduce both your nutrient and protein intake so that you will not overstimulate mTOR. 
That doesn't sound like much fun to me. But this is where things get confusing because there are other lifestyle modifications which can jumpstart the house cleaning process of autophagy without starving yourself on a routine basis. And both Dr. Sinclair and Dr. Greger mention these other lifestyle modifications, yet unless I am completely misinterpreting their message, they keep falling back on caloric restriction and reduced protein intake as standard operating procedure. It's at this point, I must admit, the concept of laying low is not in the elderly vegan's vocabulary. And just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, and of course this is in addition to all the over-the-top strength training and cardio workouts that I do, you need to see the destruction I created at age 72, where I relocated at least 130 tons of dirt and broken slabs of bedrock over a four-month period in an effort to recontour a 61-degree slope into a more user-friendly 44-degree slope. And I did this with nothing more than a pick, a shovel, and a wheelbarrow. What you see in this photo used to be a lawn. And those drain pipes you see in the background used to be 15 inches under the ground. I might also mention that the devastation you see here is just a small portion of the entire slope which got nuked. Never underestimate the power of an elderly vegan when he is hell-bent on nuking his own backyard with nothing more than third world hand tools. So in order for me to do what I do, I need a huge intake of both calories and protein on a daily basis. My average summertime caloric intake is a whopping 3,600 calories per day, and my protein intake is also whopping coming in at 154 grams per day, which is about three times more than the recommended amount. Yet strenuous physical workouts are technically destructive process. Muscle fibers are traumatized and torn. It's in one's recovery phase where extra protein is needed to repair all those traumatized muscle fibers. Yet once you recover, you come back stronger than you were before. And make no mistake, if I continued to expend the same level of energy and you took away my excess calories and protein, I would go anorexic in no time at all. I would grind to a halt and I would lose a boatload of lean body mass in the process. So what's occurring here? It would seem as though I should be squarely in the realm of ramping up mTOR given my excessive nutrient intake and as such my house cleaning mode of autophagy should have ground to a halt a long time ago. Should I not be a basket case of chronic disease by age 74? But as mentioned in a few moments, mentioned a few moments ago, there is more than one way to go into house cleaning mode than just autophagy without caloric restriction or reduced protein intake. And according to Dr. Sinclair, the other things one can do to jumpstart the house cleaning process is to engage in moderate to intense aerobic exercise and include food items which stimulate autophagy, either directly or indirectly. Food items such as olive oil, green tea, turmeric, pomegranate, apple cider vinegar, fiber-rich foods, coffee, and spermidine-laden veggies such as mushrooms and mangoes. Spermidine, by the way, is a nutrient which was recently recognized as a major driver of autophagy. Also, Dr. Sinclair notes the phytonutrient resveratrol found in red grapes, as well as in supplement form, is a potent stimulator of autophagy. As it turns out, I happen to include all of those items in my nutritional program. In addition, 
Dr. Sinclair also mentions that the stress of subjecting yourself to either hot or cold therapy also mimics the benefits of caloric restriction. And I engage in heat therapy as well. So maybe, just maybe, I've done an end run around the need for caloric and protein restriction for this house cleaning process to occur. Mind you, I'm not recommending one method or the other. It's just that I'm providing you with information which works for me. At any rate, given my biomarkers for health in general are absolutely stellar, it would seem that whatever I'm doing by ramping up mTOR is not setting the stage for deadly chronic disease. And if there was one lab test as a biomarker which should indicate this to be the case, I would certainly think it would be the results of my high-sensitivity C-reactive protein. This test measures systemic inflammation and it is a general indicator that deadly chronic disease might be occurring. My results of this test were so favorable that my physician of functional medicine told me that never before had he encountered a patient in his entire career with as favorable C-reactive protein results as mine. Maybe you can see I have it both ways after all. Perhaps one can consume excess nutrients and protein later in life as a hedge against developing sarcopenia, yet still engage in the house cleaning process of autophagy and thus avoid chronic disease. At any rate, I hope you found this video informative. And if you did, please give us a like and we would also enjoy hearing your comments as well. To your good health, the elderly vegan.